So hi everyone, uh, welcome to the YouTube channel of Independent Science News. So my name is Jonathan Latham and uh, I am the editor of Independent Science News and what we're doing uh, for this week's video is to do continue a little series of book reviews that uh, have been basically sort of place markers for all the different kinds of uh, things that we're going to discuss in this uh, series. So the, the book review uh, for this week is called Real Science and it's a sociology and uh, philosophy of science book. So you know one, one of the things that we're going to go into in these, in, in these YouTube channels uh, is basically to discuss uh, you know, not only the propaganda around science, not only the, the actual science itself of food and agriculture and health and so on, but also to put those in the context, right, of what we understand about science. So this is a book called Real Science, What It Is and What It Means is the subtitle. And the author is John Zyman. And, uh, you know, the reason I've chosen this book is a little bit against my rules of choosing a well-written book. Because this is not quite a well-written book. It's a very learned book. He's done an awful lot of reading. And this book, reading this book will save you from uh, doing a lot of reading. He summarized, you know, essentially uh, 50, 75 years of philosophy of science and 50 years of uh, sociology of science and tried to put them together into a sort of coherent assessment of whether these philosophers and these sociologists have really discovered anything interesting and, and useful about the scientific method. Because uh, the scientific method is, you know, in general terms, is considered by many, many people to be a unique method of human inquiry, right? It's kind of set on a pedestal. We set it on a pedestal ourselves as a society, and scientists themselves like to set it on a pedestal. And they see sociologists and philosophers as people want to take it off that pedestal. And in many cases, that's not accurate description of these sociologists and philosophers. Many of them actually would like to, to put science on a pedestal. You know, people like um, Karl Popper, he was interested in, do you know, trying to establish that pedestal on a rigorous basis, right? You can't just say scientists... Science is a unique method of, science, of, of human inquiry without explaining why that is, right? There has to be a specific reason or a specific set of reasons. And so Karl Popper was trying with his uh, ideas about hypothesis and criticism, was trying to, to you know, pin down that, the, what, what it really meant to have a scientific method. But many scientists have seen these uh, inquiries into science as being threatening. And so, so what's interesting about John Simon is, John Simon is a physicist. He's a British physicist, and he wanted to look at all these critiques of science and work out whether they really had, uh, there was anything to that, right? And these are critiques, as I said, in a, many of them in a constructive sense. So, so he's, he's done an awful lot of reading into uh, feminist critiques of science, into philosophers like Thomas Kuhn and Karl Popper and Paul Feyerabend, but also into the writings of sociologists of science, right? So sociologists of science are people who believe that science is a social institution. And so this, as a social institution, uh, the nature of, for example, like uh, the sociologist uh, Robert Merton, he was interested in the, what distinguishes science is the sharing of knowledge, is the disinterested nature of the people who do the science, uh, and their objectivity, right? So he kind of divided science and tried to look at each one of these characters of science uh, individually. And many sociologists of science have gone way beyond that and started to question, uh, you know, in a very detailed way, the objectivity that scientists claim. And so, uh, so John Simon is interested in putting all these critiques together and seeing whether they really establish that science, science to be a unique and profitable and, and superior, really, uh, system of, scientific, of, of human understanding. And so he, he goes through all these critiques 
uh, and he looks at them all individually and in many cases he sees that they have validity, these critiques. And so he goes through, uh, you know, all these, all these, these philosophers and social scientists, he sees that, sees that they have validity. And, and he summarizes their argument. So this is a very useful reason to read this book, right? Is because, you know, this is a shortcut into the whole, you know, a few pages on Karl, Karl Popper, for example. Is, is a, it's just a summary of many, many of the things that Karl Popper wrote. So, so he looks at all these, uh, all these uh, critiques and he sees that they have validity. You know, it's not really clear, for example, in the case of Karl Popper, that scientists ever really formulate uh, their hypotheses very accurately or that they actually test them very well, right? There's many, many ways in which you can fail to test a hypothesis. So Karl Popper's uh, theories of the uniqueness of scientific knowledge are not, uh, are not held in high esteem by philosophers of science anymore because, you know, when you look at his concepts in, in detail, it's not clear what they really constitute. And, and if you look at the practical way of which scientists go about their hypothesis testing, for example, you often find there's a whole body of scientists who who will say, one lot will say, well, this test, this hypothesis was tested to destruction and it failed, and then you'll find another group who basically will still be clinging to the hypothesis, and they will be saying, well, there, was some, there were problems with the testing of this, or this is, a, this is a test, but all it does is it trims the hypothesis a little bit, and so the central element of this hypothesis basically remains. And so this is why, for example, Karl Popper's uh, uh, thesis about about philosophy of science is not so well uh, well you know respected anymore. So he goes to so John Simon. He goes through all these things and he gets to page three hundred and thirty, which is basically the last page of the book. And and he sees that he sort of shows you. He builds up to the ending in which he says, uh, you know, all these these critiques. You know, there is no defense against all these critiques. There's no real evidence that science is a special form of human, human inquiry and, not, and gives rise to a uniquely reliable body of knowledge. And so, but, but he is like, um, he reaches this end and he basically, he throws in the towel, right, intellectually, and he says, essentially says, well, but scientists uh, uh, reproduce their results, right? They triangulate their results. And therefore, you know, the fact that you've got scientists in different times and different places triangulating their results, that is what makes science unique. And he doesn't uh, justify that thesis, right? But, but he just in, in, in introduces that pretty much on the last page of the book as a way to save the idea that science is a unique and superior body of knowledge, and uh, and it's total total intellectual failure on his part, in my opinion, to just bring something in on page three hundred and thirty and say that this is what actually saves science, because you can really easily he doesn't critique that idea, and you really easily can critique that idea. It's not true at all that that scientists uh, reproduce each other's results in that kind of a way. Or they may take 25 years to do that. Or there may be a, some, you know, commercial pressure not to do that. So this is a totally unsatisfactory resolution to this, to this book. And so I, I think, uh, you know, what's really interesting is that John Zyman basically throws in the towel at the end of this book in this kind of dramatic way. And a couple of years later he died. And it, feels, it felt to me like... This is kind of like he'd, he'd done 15 years of inquiry and, and failed really to do what he wanted to do. But in the process, he wrote a great book. If you ignore the last page, this is a really, really useful book that will be a shortcut for you for, for, uh, or at least the basis of an, for an understanding to go back and read these books all properly. So I really recommend this book actually for that reason. So this is Real Science by John Zyman. And, uh, and so that, that'll be the end of the book review for this week. So please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And, uh, and I hope we'll see you again next week. Thank you.